Morning everyone. Welcome to Road Road Restore. I'm John. So in this video, we're going to be trying to get all this bottom end back together, trying to get all the gears working properly, and uh, buttoning it all up. So, uh, whew, let's get on with it. Okay then, just to let you guys know, I'm having a bit of trouble. Uh, I've done a, like a dry rebuild so I could check the gears but the gears wouldn't select at all so I went back on myself and realised that, that if you can see down there but the little wheel thing inside there I put it on facing this way which was back to front so I swapped all that out and then uh, put it all back together again and all the gears work perfect the only problem was they were back to front <laughs> yes so you had to click up for first gear and then click down for the other five gears which would have been a bit weird I think I think it's better if you click down one and five up so now I've just got to work all these selectors out again and make sure that they're on the right way because they were obviously on the wrong way because it was selecting the gears back to front I copied the one in that gearbox whoever was riding that bike was clicking one up and five down weird so anyway let me work this out and then I'll be back to you I'll give it another dry build and I'll take it all apart again now I'll put the gasket glue on and oil everything and then I'll film when I'm putting it all back together wish me luck right then this is a few days later from the last clip I must have had this crankcase off and on at least 20 times in the past few days I've been trying to get the gearbox to work the opposite way round to what it is working because like I said, you click up for first gear, which isn't right, you're supposed to click down. And then you click down for all the other five gears. But I've been sitting here, racking my brain, looking at it, thinking I'm going to have to give up with this because I'm not going to put it all back together and it's, the gears are back to front. And then I suddenly started looking at the manual. Uh, the penny dropped. It's either gear shifter. If you put it on the other way, the gears will be reversed, wouldn't they? But if I look at the one in the book, the gear shifter, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Gear shifter is pointing away from the engine. My gear shifter my gear shifter is pointing towards the engine oh, how silly can you get simple mistake like that wasting hours and hours on a simple mistake like that Okay then, so first thing we're going to do is get the chains on to the main crank. Uh, we've got the alternator chain on. Then next we need to get into the middle the cam chain, camshaft chain. And then we need to get the oil pump chain onto its main cog. It's a bit 
fiddly but because this is so heavy this cog is for the oil pump chain and this cog is for the cam chain and obviously that's the alternator chain next I'm going to oil all the main bearing shells like so and we can put some engine oil on all the uh, mating surfaces of the main shaft like so and if you bring the con rods to the top like so you can see a little notch so if you think these have dried up you can squirt a little oil in there too just make sure right then so now we should be able to lift the main crank into the engine so you drop your cam chain through the centre hole obviously because that wants to go to the top of the engine the other two chains want to stay this side of the engine. So, careful how you get everything in because it's very heavy and it can trap your fingers. Just make sure these chains are free and that one is going through the centre. Bring you in a bit closer. And we're not quite located yet, so let's try and uh, get it located into the shells. Here we go, that's it. Okay, then, so we just slot this, try and keep the alignment at the top so we can see the uh, tape. Put it onto the chain, looks like a good position. Is that right? You just put in a piece of wire in the hole with the oil weight, and then looking at the line up mark, yes, I would say that's definitely lined up. So we can continue on the forward movement and hopefully we can give it a bash and it will go into place there we go then don't forget to remove your masking tape ok then so we've got three fixing bolts uh, the bucket says use red lock that looks like red thread lock but it's not it's blue medium strength I don't know if you could see it but that is set to 21 foot pounds so these three bolts are torqued to 21 foot pounds that's that one that's that one and that's that one ok let's put our spanner on the shaft and make sure everything's turning nice and freely that all appears to be good so the next job is to fit the alternator chain tensioner so we just put it into place like so that is three 10 millimeter bolts and they all need a drop of thread lock on so there's one there's two is number three and these three bolts should be nine foot pounds that's one that's 
two and that's three okay so now we should be able to pull our little split pin out let the plunger go there we go should be all set right then so as you probably noticed there I just briefly put the alternator into this engine that is because I am making a separate video on how I fitted my alternator to the CBR1000F engine so I've done loads of research on looking for videos on the CBR1000F engine and I can't find anywhere where someone is fitting the alternator so I'm going to make a separate video of fitting the alternator because I do believe it will get thousands of hits in the future so if you're fitting an alternator or you're thinking about fitting an alternator to the CBR in a few days I will leave a link at the bottom of this video to the video that I am making of how I fitted my alternator so hope you enjoyed the video please like share comment subscribe and uh, I'll see you on the next one. See you in another life, brother.